And welcome back to the second segment of uh, Community Viewpoint. Very interesting uh, segment or two segments. It's something that's near and dear to my heart. We have uh, Dan Schinhofen, uh, Commissioner from Area 5, or Area 5, I'm thinking Area <laughs> We'll 50, talk about that too. <laughs> District 5 for Nye okay. County, and Dr. Michael Vogel, uh, consultant with the NWRPO. You go figure out what that means. You can go Google it. But anyway, uh, we, we were talking a great deal about um, $5.6 billion, and uh, Dr. Vogel will lead us into the second segment. Where do we want to go with okay, this? Okay, I, I, I gave you a little slide we can put up that, that has uh, some a, a brief summary of a report that the Department of Energy prepared to address those Blue Ribbon Commission recommendations. There you go. Here we go. And I wanted to just talk about this. This is where the $5.6 billion number comes from. Um, the Department of Energy has... Um, made a proposal to respond to the Blue Ribbon Commission rec report recommendations. And you can see here, they talked about essentially three things. One of them was called a pilot scale interim storage facility. And they wanted to have that operational by 2021. Right. They wanted to have a, a consolidated interim storage facility operational by 2025 and a geologic repository cited by a consent-based process. Remember, Dan talked about that consent-based process by 2026. Um, licensed by 2042 and operational by 2048. Now, in order to have a facility operational by 2021, there are a number of things that have to be do done. The Nuclear Waste Policy Act has to be changed because it does not allow storage. It focuses on, repos on a repository. That's important. Um, new direction has to come from Congress. New regulations have to be developed. One or more sites has to be found, characterized, designed, go mm -hmm. through the licensing hearings and then build it. And, and I have one word for that. That's impossible. Mm -hmm. okay, nonetheless, that's what the DOE current plan is. Now, there's a, 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 an, inter, an interesting aspect to this. If you, this is supposed to be a consolidated, or excuse me, a consent-based process. And one of the reasons Congress has historically not placed a storage facility in the process. Right now, you cannot have a storage facility until the first repository is operational. Mm -hmm. Okay, And the reason they've done that is because historically, every time they've looked at storage, they've realized that if you develop a storage facility, it takes the pressure off the repository. And we might just move that material into storage and never build the repository. So mm -hmm. Congress historically has stayed away from that. Yeah. Now, I want to point out something here on those, those numbers that were up on the screen. If you have to have the consolidated interim storage facility operational by 2026, and you don't have to cite the repository, in, excuse me, to 2025, and you don't have to cite the repository until 2026, there's no pressure in the system to cause you to make the repository go. Mm -hmm. so okay. That's a big deal to me, okay? And, and finally, I just wanted to point out something. If you look at these numbers, the time projected from 2021 to uh, 2046, excuse me, from, from, excuse me, from today till 2048 is 35 years, yeah. okay? 35 years ago was when we started Yucca Mountain. Yes. So we're, we're talking about the same kind of time frame and no guarantee that you can move it forward with, with any, any likelihood of success. Right. So, Dan, do you want to tell us why we're in this predicament? Yeah. Well, it's pretty straight ahead. You know, the White House uh, decided not to follow the law and uh, Harry Reid's made sure of that in the Senate. Um, so uh, with ignoring the law, uh, uh, now uh, Shimkus in, in the Congress is doing a good job of continuing to point that out. And, and in the Senate, they're trying to pass another law to go around that law. Uh, the uh, Democrats are trying to say that the Republicans are holding that up, when in all truth, the Congress, the House, has uh, had I think it was 118 Democrats vote with Shimkus, and they're saying we're not gonna we're not gonna pass another law to circumvent this law unless Yucca Mountain's in it because all those time frames that he just showed you, the quickest way to get a repository up is to move forward with Yucca Mountain, and there's nothing to say that uh, with their date of 2048. Of course, there's hmm. probably some scientists out there who would love that date because they can build their whole career around that. You yes. know, oh, we got till 2048. Um, there's nothing to say with this consent-based idea, which is a very nice idea, uh, that 
uh, some other state, I'm, uh, I'm not going to name one, just some other state says, oh yes, we're for it, and then eight years from now they get a new governor and a new set of, uh, you know, legislators who say, oh no, no, we don't want it. And, and one of the other arguments that you always hear is, um, we don't want to become the waste dump for the nation. Uh, there's a place called Area 5, okay. <laughs> and there's lots of waste there, yeah. and we've had lots of uh, tests out there. Mm -hmm. And so there, we, we are, you know, we have that here. Uh, we should see about, uh, you know, at least getting some benefit out of this. And let me reiterate, I just want to go back to something we said in the first segment. W again, we're not saying give us your waste no matter what. Right. We, uh, all we have been saying consistently, the Board of County Commissioners, and now with six local counties, Lincoln, White Pine, um, Esmeralda, I'm, I can't name them all, um, they went along with this resolution that says, let's hear the science, uh, let's determine if it can be constructed and operated safely, and then we can move forward. So once again, we're not saying just send it to us. We just want the law to be followed. Exactly. Well, John, let me just point out that those numbers I was showing you before about the pilot scale interim storage facility, mm -hmm. DOE's cost estimate to make that happen by 2021, mm -hmm. start the program over, right. is $5.6 billion. That's where that number came uh, from. There we there go. Okay. That's where that number came from. And on July 31st, Congressman Shimkus had a hearing and he had uh, Energy Secretary Moniz on the table in front of him, and he simply said to, sec to Secretary Moniz, why not offer this money to Nevada? $5.6 billion. $5.6 billion. Right. From, from the perspective of, of members of Congress, and I, I like Dan's points, they're important. The, all throughout the testimony from the, or the, the testimony is not the right term when con congressmen are asking questions, but all throughout the questioning period, um, the, the <laughs> When you're facing the television screen, it's the right side of the room, kept saying, the Republican fixation on Yucca Mountain. The Republican fixation on Yucca Mountain is an artifact. The, every time something like this comes up in the House and there's a vote on it, the vote is typically 330 plus and minus to 80, okay? It, it really is well in favor, 100, 100 plus and minus. It's really strongly bipartisan, right. strongly uh, supported by many of the Democratic members of the Congress as well. Mm -hmm. I believe it would be if uh, the Senate, if we could get a vote in the Senate. But uh, Senator Reid will not allow that to happen. No, so I'm, I'm thinking that if we didn't look at it uh, with Republicans and Democrats, if we just went without any politics, I'd still have my job at Yakima. Yeah, you still have your job. <laughs> yeah. Um, I believe in the, the project. I, I, I did extensive search, uh, searching on it before I came out here, before I moved out here. And uh, I went through the, it was the pre-EIS at that time, mm -hmm. and uh, I found nothing wrong with it, and I decided to move out here. But there's other issues about living in yeah, Trump, but sure. it's not because of Yucca Mountain. Can I, uh, I'm going to deviate just a, a, a bit. The first time I met uh, John was on Postal Road. Uh, and he probably doesn't remember. I just moved here, and I went in because oh. I now lived in Nye County, yes. and uh, and I'd heard all the evil stuff when I lived in Clark County. Mm -hmm. So I went in and got all the material I could get, and I read through all this. I watched all this, and I came to the conclusion that, gee, maybe we should just hear the science and go from there. And I wrote one of my first columns on Yucca Mountain. For that's right. When that's I did right. Rambling as a Nevada. Oh, I've got flashbacks now. Yeah. <laughs> well, let, me, let me let me. Go ahead. Let me help point out a couple of things. The state of Nevada has two principal arguments yeah. against the Yucca Mountain project. The first one is Yucca Mountain was not selected fairly. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's a fact. It was not selected fairly. Right. There, the Waste Policy Act was passed because there were supposed to be two repositories, and I, for one, strongly support mm -hmm. a second repository in this mm -hmm. country. But the, the argument that you hear from, <clears throat> from Richard Bryan all the time is there's no money for incentives, so don't even think about talking to the federal government. And what you just saw from, commit, from Congressman Shimkus is not the first time he's tried to send a message that there is, in fact, money available for incentives. If, if Nevada would just negotiate with Congress, would negotiate with the federal government. Mm -hmm. Now, um, when, when the Blue Ribbon Commission report came out, um, one of the first things the Nyconic commissioners did was send a letter to the Secretary of Energy saying, we're willing, you know, come and talk to us. And of course we got a letter saying, well, the state won't accept it. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's where we sit. I, and, and part of the reason that I wanted to come on your show this morning was simply to, to remind people that 
That argument is false. There, there really is a lot of evidence that there's money available. Even before the Blue Ribbon Commission thing where we were going to start with this new storage concept from this day, Mr. Shimkus was on the floor of the house making observations that said there will be money for incentives. Absolutely. And this is the, the strongest you've ever heard from him. Why not take the $5.6 billion it would take to restart the program? And incidentally, throwing away $15 billion already spent on Yucca Mountain, why not take that 5.6 and offer it to Nevada for incentives? Right. Yeah, because I've, I've seen what's been put in there already. I, I, I've read the documentation, not as, as extensively as you, but I've been there. I've seen what uh, we built already, and mm -hmm. it's, it's just sitting there. Right. The, uh, interesting, the, they're, they're, doing a, they're talking about doing another uh, sales tax increase to fund uh, education, and it, they want it tied to, you know, whatever. Uh, this would be a great uh, method to Not. fund education yes. uh, if they would just talk. Again, it seems to me, and when I first went in there and got that material, I wasn't for or against. Right. And I, I went in with an open mind, but it seems to me the state's whole position has been this, but we need to pull their fingers out of their ears and say, look, there is incentives, and let's get to that first point where we hear the science. Right. After 30 years and $15 billion, to walk away from it now is just insanity. We need yes. to get the message out to the people in Nye County and the people in Nevada that what they're hearing about there not being any benefits, so don't even get your hopes up, is wrong. Right. So I, w w this is a fantastic show. Uh, I was in Walmart yesterday and I uh, was talking to a lady, well, I was going to say young lady, but she's probably middle-aged okay but uh, she knows of you she's read some of what you've done uh, she is all for what you say so that's someone with an open mind and thank you for listening for understanding and we we do get it the word out there to, to some people it might not have been from the show it may have been in print at the Prom Valley Times sure. or, the, or the mirror but some intelligent beings are out there and listening mm -hmm. and thank you for your comments at the Walmart over by the uh, the bicycle tires <laughs> so <laughs> thank you <laughs> how many more minutes do we have Ian we have one please wrap it up folks well, uh, let me, uh, if Dan, do you have a, cl a closing comment you want to make? I, there, there's, like, there's another. Um, Just the same thing. Let's, let's hear the science. Uh, get, get with your congressmen and senators and say, for, follow the law. So. There, are, there are two very powerful congressmen mm -hmm. on the House um, Energy and, and Environment, excuse me, the House Energy and Commerce Committee. Uh, Mr. Um, Dingell, who is the longest serving member of Congress, is from Michigan, and Mr. Upton, who's also from Michigan. And those, those two gentlemen recently wrote an editorial piece that basically said, it's time to stop messing around. It's time to follow the law, try to move forward. And, and Mr. Upton and Mr. Dingell both testified during Mr. Shimkus' hearing, mm -hmm. strongly supportive of everything that Mr. Shimkus said, strongly supportive of moving the program forward, strongly supportive of trying to get Nevada to the table to negotiate. Right. Well, I thank you, uh, thank you. Commissioner. Welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Ian. And uh, let's hear more comments over uh, <laughs> it's Smiths, Albertsons, or wherever. All right, thank you for watching, folks.